she's back. Rue is interested for this guy. Oh. Welcome to Mocha Create at Home. My name is Taylor and I am an educator at Mocha and this is my cat, Rue. And if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, Mocha Create, we learn about Mocha, we learn about our collection, um, the mission of the museum, and we also look at art and make art together. Today, we are going to be learning about Tyrus Wong and making our very own landscapes. Tyrus Wong was an artist and illustrator and is probably best known for his designs for the backgrounds of Disney's Bambi. Tyrus was born in Taishan in southern China in 1910. He came to the U.S. with his father when he was nine. Once Tyrus left China, he never saw his sister or mother again. Tyrus entered the United States through Angel Island. We've talked about Angel Island during other Mocha Creates, but in case you're new, Angel Island is an island near San Francisco in California, and it was an immigration station where a lot of immigrants from China and Asia first came to the United States. After a month on Angel Island, Tyrus was finally able to join his father in America. Tyrus grew up in California and loved art from an early age. He even went to an art school for high school. When he was an adult, Tyrus became an illustrator at Disney. He basically helped to draw all the scenes that went in between the important action moments, and this job was called an in-betweener. When it was decided that Disney was going to make a Bambi movie, Tyrus read the book and made some sketches of the setting and background. His artwork was influenced by American art styles and also by Chinese art styles, especially the Song Dynasty from about a thousand years ago. What do you notice about Tyrus's artwork that is similar to the two other landscape paintings we looked at? I noticed that some parts of Tyrus's painting have more detail or are clearer, but then there are other areas that just sort of show the essence or feeling of the landscape, the setting that he's painted. Walt Disney saw Tyrus's sketches and decided to use his art style for all of the backgrounds in Bambi. Even today, you can see Tyrus's stylistic influence in Disney films. Though Tyrus was essentially the lead artist for Bambi, he was only listed as a background artist and wasn't recognized as lead artist until 2001. Today we're making our own landscapes inspired by Tyrus. I am going to be using watercolors to make my landscape. I already made a sample, which you can see here. If you have paint and especially watercolors, I do recommend that you use those. But if you don't have paint, don't worry. You can definitely make a landscape with any materials that you have at home. Markers, colored pencils, craypaws. To get started on our landscape paintings, I first want to take a moment to just imagine a place where we might like to be right now. So take a minute, close your eyes. If you're a New Yorker, this might be especially easy to do. Maybe you've been dreaming of getting out of the city. And if you wanna sketch out your drawing before we paint, now is the time to go ahead and do that. I'm going to walk through a few tips and techniques that you can use when you're painting to help you get started on your landscapes. And the first tip that I have for you is to start light with your paint and build up. Um, it's easy to add more paint, but it's really hard or almost impossible to take paint away. 
And if you're using watercolors especially, um, this means that you want to start with more water so that your paint is lighter and then you can always make it more saturated as you go. And you might notice I am sort of dabbing my paintbrush off before I paint so that it's not too, too wet when I put it on the paper. You can see it's just a really light color, just showing the different sections. You can also think about using different lines and different textures in our paintings. So if you look at my completed example, you can see that the lines, the brush strokes, and the textures that I have in my sky look a lot different than the ones in my like cliff here. And those also all look a lot different than the ones in my trees here. With watercolors, different textures might also happen depending on how much water or how much paint you have on your brush. So trying out different amounts of paint and trying painting when your brush is dry or a little bit more dry versus when it's wetter. So to add texture to my grass, I went in with really sort of quick brush strokes and I used a couple of different colors. To add detail to my sky, I still want to think about texture and line, but I also want to think about color mixing. To make any color, we have three primary colors. We have red, blue, and yellow. And those are the three colors that you're going to use to mix any other color. If you want to make green, Think about what you have to mix. It's gonna be blue and yellow to make green. What about orange? Think about that. It's gonna be red and yellow. And then finally, the color that I'm mixing, purple. If you wanna make purple, we're gonna mix together blue and red. And I don't know if you can see it. You can get a nice purple with that. Um, I don't want my purple to be too dark though, I want my sky to be a little bit light, so I'm gonna also add some white to my paint. So that's something to think about too if you're color mixing. You don't just have your three primary colors, you also have black and white that you can add to your paint to make it darker or lighter. Here's my painting with my purple, sort of curvy, flowy lines added into the sky. Now, before I'm finished with my landscape, I want to add some details. Um, just like in my other one, I added sort of these lines for the cliffs, and I also went in and added more specific trees. I want to do something similar here. When you add details like that, you want to make sure that your painting is nice and dry. If it's still wet, it means that some of your details might end up bleeding and they won't be as crisp as you like. some blue swirls around the outside of my purple swirls in the sky. I added some white too to sort of highlight those. Started off by, actually made a mistake, some more sort of like regular flowers that you think of when you think of a drawing of a flower and I realized I really didn't like those and they really weren't in Tyrus's style so I ended up going over and just covering all of those flowers up with just dots to make it look sort of like there were wildflowers on my hill. And then I also went back over my hill and added some shorter 
spikier stripes of grass and some different colors to sort of give it some more dimension, make it look like it was popping out or back. Now that Rue and I have our painting, we need to figure out what to do with it. Your landscape is a work of art on your own. Tyrus used his as the backdrops for Bambi for Disney paintings, but they're also a work of art on their own. You can hang them up in your home, in your window, you can make your own gallery. Of course, we would love it if you would share them with us. You can use the hashtag Mocha Create at Home or tag us Mocha NYC. You can also email us your work directly. And finally, in a couple weeks, we have another Tyrus inspired project where these landscapes might come in handy. So thank you!